Hey everyone, welcome to another Tank Talk. I'm Matt and hey, we're right in the middle of a series called This or That. What's it about? Well, it's about the one thing that all of us struggle with in some way or another, comparison. It's when we hold this in our lives next to the that in someone else's life. And suddenly uh, we don't feel like we measure up. That's comparison. And it's a bigger part of our lives than most of us realize. Comparing our this to their that can leave us feeling all kinds of ways. Disappointed, hopeless, frustrated, anxious, motivated maybe, and sometimes even like you're better than others. But today we're gonna talk about one of the most powerful feelings comparison brings out in us. The feeling of jealousy. Now, I love baseball and I always wanted to play baseball for my school. And in middle school, being on the school baseball team was such an honor. And when I hit sixth grade, I tried out for the sixth grade baseball team. Now, I'm not a great athlete, I've never have been, but I love baseball. And I don't think I completely sucked, but I knew that I had a shot if I tried hard. The coach was also one of my favorite math teachers ever and we had a good relationship, so I thought I had a chance. During tryouts, I didn't do anything to stand out either way. I just was just average. I didn't mess up bad, but I didn't make any diving plays or hit any home runs. I was just small and I had a reputation for not being a great athlete. My friend Ryan Searcy, on the other hand, was a shoe-in for the team. He was athletic, he had a fun personality, he was a good teammate, and he looked way better in a baseball uniform than I ever would. That kid had it all, and our team was better with him on our roster. But Ryan never made it to tryouts. He missed the entire thing. On the other hand, I was there early, I stayed late, I even got hit by a pitch on the wrist and kept playing to show that I was tough enough to be on the team. And the next week when the roster was announced, I didn't make the team. But you know who did? Ryan freaking Searcy. Yeah, I was mad, I was hurt, but most of all, I was jealous that Ryan got what he wanted without even trying. I never tried out for baseball again, and Ryan and mine's friendship kinda dwindled away. You see, jealousy is a very specific type of comparison. It's what we feel when we want what someone else has, and it happens more than we may realize. When that kid in your class comes in with the new pair of Yeezys, but you're still rocking the old ones from last season, or maybe when your friend is so much fun that everyone wants to be around them, but can't seem to muster up the same kind of popularity, or when a kid in your small group has two parents living at home, but you have a family that's been separated forever, or when the other kid gets the solo, or your sibling gets more attention, or that girl has better clothes, or that boy has been named team captain. The list could go on and on and on, right? And if we really think about it, jealousy can show up just about everywhere we turn. And while it may not seem like that big of a deal at first, jealousy has a lot of potential to do harm to both the way we see ourselves and the way that we see others. For starters, jealousy can cause us to feel insecure. The more jealous we become of someone else, the more insecure and uncertain we feel about ourselves. And that insecurity can quickly lead to us becoming unhappy, unhappy with our stuff, unhappy with our appearance, unhappy with our friend group, unhappy with our family, unhappy with our status at school. It's just hard to be happy with any part of what we have or who we are when we're letting jealousy motivate the way that we see it. Maybe we even end up angry. Like we're so jealous of what the other person has that we just get mad. Mad at our parents for not letting us have what we want. Mad at God for not giving us the life that they have. And sometimes mad at the other person for simply having what we want. That's what it was for me. Or maybe we don't experience a lot of jealousy when we compare ourselves to others because we feel pretty good about our lives. And that's dangerous too. When we look at, we, when we look at how our this is compared to other people's that, honestly, we might feel better than them. We might even look down on other people because we feel that they don't measure up. But the problem with comparison is that it's a cycle. While we may feel great about our lives now, it's never enough, is it? So we keep comparing and we keep measuring ourselves to others and eventually uh, we just keep getting jealous. It just never stops. And this is where jealousy gets really tricky because it doesn't just impact us, it impacts our relationship with other people. When we're jealous with someone else, we sometimes start keeping our distance from them or we avoid them because we don't want to deal with the jealousy that we feel when we're around them. Or we start talking about them behind their back 
We can tear them down to make ourselves feel better and eventually we stop being able to be happy for them at all. We stop being able to celebrate the good things in their lives because it only reminds us of what's missing in ours. And that's what jealousy does. It keeps us from celebrating the good things around us, both in our lives and in the lives of others. And for me, that's just not the kind of life that I want. I don't wanna be unhappy simply because this in my life doesn't compare to the that in someone else's. I don't wanna be the kind of friend or family member or teammate or, or member of a small group that can't be happy for someone else or myself. So what do we do? How do we keep ourselves from letting jealousy and comparison change the way that we see ourselves and others? People have been dealing with this whole jealousy thing for thousands of years. So much so that the Bible even has stories of people whose lives were affected by it. One of those people is a guy named David, pretty famous guy in the Bible. His story starts out kind of crazy because he went from being a shepherd boy to a hero on a, battlefield, on a battlefield to eventually becoming king. Now at first, the king of Israel at the time was a guy named Saul, and he, he liked David. After all, David killed a giant named Goliath and saved the nation during a battle, so that was a big win for Saul's army. He was excited over the victory. The people of Israel greeted King Saul with a parade to celebrate as the army returned home from battle. And that's when things started to change. You see, Saul had a major issue with the way that the people decided to celebrate. The song they sang celebrated both King Saul and David. And as King, Saul didn't want to share his fame and popularity, so take a look at his response. This made Saul very angry. What's this, he said? They credit David with 10,000s and me only with thousands? Next, they'll be making him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. You see what happened there? Just like that, jealousy changed the way that Saul viewed David. And eventually, that jealousy changed the way that he treated David. Saul's jealousy got so bad that he even tried to kill David. Not once, not twice, but multiple times. Why? because he was jealous. Saul was happy with his life and even his relationship with David until he started comparing himself to David. And that comparison led to jealousy and that jealousy changed everything. It changed Saul, it changed his relationship with David and it consumed a big part of Saul's life. Saul spent a lot of his reign as king thinking of ways to kill David. Now I know that's a dramatic story, but that's what jealousy has the power to do, to change the way we see what we have to destroy our relationships with other people, to kill our ability to celebrate the good things happening in our lives and in theirs. And when we compare ourselves to other people, we end up not celebrating others or ourselves in the process. In another place in the Bible, in a book filled with wisdom called Proverbs, a writer explained jealousy this way. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. Envy is just another way to say jealousy. As the writer of this proverb said, it has the potential to rot or break down your bones. Of course, it won't literally do that, but the writer was simply painting a picture of a way jealousy impacts our lives from the inside out. Think about your bones for a second. They're pretty important to your body. They're the core of what holds you up. They're what makes the shape of you. The writer of this proverb was painting a pretty awful picture that envy hits at the core of who you are. Jealousy rots you to the core. It decays, it breaks you down, it eats you away. And when you compare your life to someone else, that jealousy you feel eats at you. It can cause the way you see yourself to break down. It can even rot your ability to celebrate anything good. And that's what happened to Saul. Jealousy rotted everything in his life. It consumed him so much that he could hardly lead the nation because of it. But David, he kept his heart at peace. And as this proverb tells us, that's what gives life to the body. See, while jealousy breaks down, peace builds up. So even though David was hurt by Saul's jealousy, in this instance at least, he never went down the road of comparison with Saul himself. David kept his eyes on what was promised to him, the good in his life, and that helped him stay at peace. And the same can be true for us. When we keep our eyes focused on what we do have, we'll find more peace. When we stop focusing on what others have, we'll be, able, we'll be better able to enjoy the good in others' lives and in theirs. We can appreciate the great things happening in other people's lives as well as our own. Because the truth is this, when we stop comparing, we can better celebrate others and ourselves.
So how do we avoid comparison and jealousy and choose to celebrate others and ourselves instead? Well, I think we can begin to do these things in two different ways. One, it starts with you. Think about what you do have that's worth celebrating. And trust me, there is something you have that's worth celebrating. Maybe it's a good relationship with your parents or a really cool older sibling or one really solid best friend. Maybe it's the fact that you made the team or simply had the courage to try out. Maybe it's just a sunny day or a song that you really love or the fact that you know that God loves you. Big or small, start avoiding jealousy by celebrating the good in your own life. And the second thing you can do is celebrate someone else. And I don't mean just anyone else. I want you to try to find a way to celebrate the person that you're jealous of right now. I know that's not gonna be easy, but remember celebration will help you move toward peace and peace will build you up. This is just as much for you as it is for the other person. So congratulate them for getting the lead in the play or compliment their new skateboard trick or talk positively about them with your friends. And if all you can do is pray for them, that works too. Prayer is a great place to start celebrating and appreciating someone else. So this week, whatever you choose to do, take a step to celebrate the good in your life and the lives of those around you. Because when we stop comparing, we can better celebrate others and ourselves. So I'll leave you with this one question for you to consider this week. Ask yourself, what is one thing or person that I can celebrate? Thanks for hanging with us. We'll see you next week.